at, at the beginning of, the, we did some brief interviews, some of you got in front of the camera, and I asked the question, and this is one of the, I think this is the subtitle of your film, the, the cost of the gender gap. Debugging the gender gap. So, so what is the cost? Is it a moral cost or is it an economic cost? I'm interested both uh, Robin and, and Cara. What, what, what is the key cost? Or is it, are those two things so bound up with each other that they are inseparable? Well, I, I don't think they're bound. I think they're very different issues. But I, I personally think that economically, this could stall our economy. I mean, by the year 2020, have I said this already? By the year 2020, there will be 1.4 million computer science jobs in the US alone, and only 400,000 computer scientists. So 1 million jobs are sitting there not filled. And if we can't fill them, you know, how does technology continue to move forward as fast and, and produce as fast as it needs to and as fast as it, as it is? number one, and number two, if we don't have diversity on the coding level, on the engineering level, then the type of products we're gonna have are so bland and basic. You know, who's really addressing the issues in socio socioeconomically diverse, you know, the needs of people like that? So, so this is study. insane, Cara, right? There's, this is like... No, it's just typical. I mean, it's just it's not, you know, you know, 10 years ago, we were beating up gay people, and now they're getting, the Supreme Court's about to, it's just, it's just progress that you have to deal with. Um, I, I think the issue is you, there's study after study after study showing diverse workplace is a better workplace on all kinds of, that's one thing that you can make the argument on. Secondly, it's not a moral thing to say, to, it's, it's, it's actually a business thing. What's interesting is happening in the internet now um, is the things that are being developed, and here's a good company, uh, even though he's had some controversies around women, Snapchat has a lot of senior women in positions of true power at Snapchat, Emily, uh, Emily White, White um, several different people they have there. Um, that's a product that's being used by men and women, who, which is very innovative right now, actually, doing all kinds of innovative things, and a lot of the new products coming out are much more, and I don't want to say about feelings, but they're not about the technology. Um, they're more about what the technology does, like the way you think of a car is getting you somewhere, not the engine. And so a lot of, a lot of what's happening in the internet right now is from a secular point of view is the technology um, is becoming invisible. And the technology is not the point, just the way it's not the point when you woke up this morning and said, ah, oh, the electrical grid is working well. You never think of the electrical yeah, yeah. grid, right? And you're never gonna think of the internet. You're just not. And so a lot of the products being made there's a lot of activity down in Los Angeles, a lot of this stuff, which, is, which has much more diverse workforces, because the products have to reflect uh, functionality and usefulness and entertainment versus the technology itself. We have a, a woman here, Londa. I'm not going to even try and pronounce your last name. It's real easy. But uh, Londa is a uh, Stanford professor, an authority in the design of computer products or digital network products particularly, I think, from the, the, the perspective of gender. Does this resonate with you, what, uh, what Cara is talking about, Londa? Oh, absolutely. Um, I direct a project at Stanford called Gendered Innovations, and we've worked with, we have 60 collaborators across Europe and Asia and the United States. And what we're really going for is how much cooler could the product be if you really understood how gender works in society? So we're not saying a woman has to design this or a man has to design that, but if everybody, all the engineers, could understand gender at some basic level, we could make products that don't miss the women. Like you had in the film, you had the example of the airbags. And you know we have a lot of examples. For example, I'll just say Google Translate. If you, I put an article about myself into Google Translate, and it comes back, Londa Schiebinger, he said, Mm -hmm. He thought, and occasionally it wrote. And, you know, what that does is it reverses... Who screwed up there, Londa? The, the Google engineer? Well, I, I'm sorry to say that maybe Stanford did at some point because we graduate those Google engineers. <laughs> well, they so, didn't grow, no, but, they, but the thing with Google is they didn't graduate, right? Maybe if they'd have graduated... <laughs> Well, that's possible. Anyway, they didn't take my course. But um, I mean, I think we at Stanford could do a better job. I mean, you're talking about education. But if we could just get this awareness, they wouldn't make error 101, and they would get cooler products. That's what so I'm look interested Look at the Apple Watch right now. It's the first one that's not completely butt ugly. And all I'm saying is it's being designed in a fashion way versus wearing it versus a lot of these other ones, which are literally designed 
to like you never like the, they're anti-dating devices or something they're, like, they're, or Google Glass or Google Glass look at Google Glass that literally could not make a supermodel hot that could like de-hot a supermodel and Google, so a barrel of 